This freight train is speeding toward a large city. It passes farmland and small towns along the way. Then it comes to the growing outer edge of the city, where there are rows and rows of suburban homes. It passes the residential district where thousands of people live. It passes the industrial districts where many of the people work in factories and mills. And finally, the train arrives in the heart of the big city. Trucks also bring to the people of the city the goods they need and want. They bring food, for there isn't enough room in the city to grow vegetables or raise cattle. From every direction, people and goods pour into the city. Boats bring other material to the city when the city is near water. For a city needs bricks and steel and glass to build tall buildings like this to house the offices of thousands of businesses in the heart of the city. Cities like this have grown on the same location where perhaps only a fur trader's cabin once stood, or where two roads crossed, and they continue to grow. It needs more and more people to manufacture things and perform different services. As more and more people arrive, the buildings get taller and taller and closer and closer together. More and more people need more and more stores. And a single department store in a big city is like dozens of different smaller stores all put together. To house the thousands of people who come to live and work in the city, enormous towers of apartments rise into the sky. And men build these towers with their hands from steel that has been made in mills by other men and from stone cut out of quarries. Because the center of a city is so crowded, the only direction left in which to build is up. But away from the crowded center, on a neighborhood street, which may look like a street in any small town, the day begins like everywhere else, with father going off to work and then his son starting off for school. This is Joey, and he lives with his family in their own house. Down the block are apartment buildings where a dozen families live. A little further down is an even taller building. And across the next street is the building where his friend's family lives, with hundreds of other families. Here, one set of apartments has been set on top of another, and another set on top of that. This one building has more people living in it than may live in a single small town. Is that you, Joey? Come up. 28, please. All right. Joey never gets tired of riding in the fast elevators. It takes only seconds for Joey to reach the 28th floor. From the balcony, he can see the top of his own house and the swimming pool below. He can see the park and the tall buildings in the center of the city. A city is made up of many smaller neighborhoods. Near the homes are apartments and stores and shops. Near the tall apartment building is a bicycle shop. A sign painter works outside a restaurant. There is a grocery store next door. 
The people of a neighborhood depend upon these businessmen, for they supply many different kinds of service. The traffic is heavy, so there is a police officer to help direct it. Trucks pass, carrying goods to stores and to people's homes. Fast trains carry people over the crowded streets, between the houses, and underneath the tall buildings. But in a neighborhood, you can usually walk to where you want to go. And Joey and Bob arrive at school. Joey's father drives down a wide expressway to his job. His car radio tells him about the traffic conditions ahead. The Congress Expressway, East and Westbound, moving And Southwest Highway is OK, East and Westbound, from Cicero to Western. And right now, we're flying just passing over. Uh... Many, many people come in from every neighborhood, from suburbs all around the city, even from smaller towns miles away. Because a city is so big, its problems are big too. Some of the problems of big cities are studied in the city hall. Here, the city mayor and neighborhood representatives try to solve these problems and make plans for the city's future. The city council decides, for example, where new housing will be built. These models show what it will look like. It agrees that areas like this that have fallen into decay must be removed. For a city is a living thing, and like any living thing, it can grow old. But men are able to tear down the old, to make room for the new. Thus, a city constantly changes and grows. The city council must also provide men and equipment to protect property. Firemen may use boats to help put out fires when the city is located near water. The city council decides that new highways must be built for the ever-growing number of cars bringing people to the city to live or work or just to visit. It provides men and equipment to keep the streets and highways clean and to remove the refuse. It provides bright lights for the streets and purchases electricity to light those lights. It provides pure drinking water. People who work hard need parks and playgrounds and places to swim. Some play baseball. Others prefer to watch. They go to a ballpark while others can... Some like to draw. Others like to see paintings in museums. A big city is full of places you can go. You can study the past or ride a roller coaster. factories and mills, the people of a city build trains. They make products for their own use, as well as for people in other parts of the country. These products leave the city on trains and jets, by boat, and in trucks. This, then, is a city. It's a place where many products are made. Different neighborhoods, each like a small town in itself, are joined together to make up this larger, more exciting community, the city. <laughs> 